Welcome into Duval Daily presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in here on Wednesday, April 3rd. The Houston Texans just dropped a bomb on the NFL, on the AFC South right now. They are trading for wide receiver Stephon Diggs, a 2025 second round pick, and they're going to get some day three capital in return from the Buffalo Bills who have been offloading players like no other this offseason, right? We're going to dive into what this means for the division, what this means for the Jaguars. Uh, I, th I think it's a massive power play for a team that has already been making power plays throughout this offseason. Uh, fascinating, really, to see how the Jaguars try to keep up here. But again, we're going to dive into it. If you enjoy the content here, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out genjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear like this hat I'm wearing right now. Just got these at the shop. Go check it out. So, like I said, Texans trading for Stephon Diggs. You now have C.J. Stroud, who was one of the best rookie quarterbacks in 2023 that I've ever seen. Stephon Diggs, who is a wide receiver one in this league. Nico Collins and Tank Dell, who were both fantastic last year for C.J. Stroud. Dalton Schultz, who is a very good tight end, maybe not the scariest tight end on the planet, but a tight end that gets the job done at a high level, very efficient. They went and got Joe Mixon, who I know a lot of folks kind of are down on that move. But have you seen Joe Mixon play against the Jacksonville Jaguars? That guy has given the Jaguars some health throughout his time in the league. And Damian Pierce has done the same thing when healthy. They have a very good offensive line overall. They have the offensive meta right now in terms of their play calling, their scheming, that Shanahan style offense. That offense is going to be tough to deal with. It already was tough to deal with, you know, when they got things rolling in 2023. They have kind of a defensive genius right now. And D'Amico Ryans as their head coach is also a great motivator. Uh, they go out and get Danico Autry, Daniil Hunter, Aziz Alshair, who has familiarity playing linebacker for uh, D'Amico Ryans, coming over from the Tennessee Titans, had played in San Francisco before. They loaded up. They went all in this offseason, and, and they had the money to do so, the cap to do so. I think it's going to be really tough for the Jaguars to, to keep up in this arms race unless they actually try to keep up here, right? I think that they have some options, some opportunities beyond just the draft to go upgrade this football team. Obviously, I think you need to upgrade cornerback. You need to upgrade the pass rush, both from the edge and the interior. Uh, I still think, you know, the common refrain has been, you know, cornerback in round one or bust for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I do think they need another cornerback, as I mentioned. But just as much as I think that you need another cornerback, I think you need to make sure your offense is firing on all cylinders and has all the pieces to do so. I think that uh, your defensive front, as I mentioned, is just as important as the cornerback room. Like, cornerback can be very uh, unstable on the back end there. It can be. But something that is very stable in the NFL is a good defensive front. And I think the Jaguars could use more depth, more talent up front in a big way. Uh, even though they have added Eric Armstead, they have Josh Allen, they have Trayvon Walker. Obviously, you're hoping Devon Hamilton comes back full strength in 2024. Roy Robertson Harris is a good depth piece. Um, you know, Travis Gibson, not a needle mover, but maybe a good depth piece there as well uh, on the edge. But I say you got to keep up in this arms race beyond the draft. Like I mentioned, I think trying to go get Brandon Ayuk, which they've been connected to Brandon Ayuk. Um, there's been a lot of buzz about the 49ers potentially wanting to move on because they can't come to terms on a long-term deal. I don't know how much of that smoke is real. Usually where there's smoke, there's fire. What would it cost to go get a Brandon Ayuk? Would a 2025 first round pick get it done? Because I would give up a first round pick and pay Brandon Ayuk. That's how good he is. And that's how much I believe in his talent. I believe in what he would bring to the Jaguars. You still have, you, you still have Trevor Lawrence on the rookie deal. Even if you sign him to an extension, that's not going to, negatively impact the cap for the next couple years based on the control you have over his his contract with that rookie deal i say you got to go all in if you don't go all in i have a hard time seeing you overcoming the texans because again the texans are incredibly well coached on the defensive side of the ball 
They are incredibly well coached on the offensive side of the ball, and they are loaded, absolutely loaded. Their roster is loaded with talent, premium talent, that they added this offseason, that they added last offseason. I mean, they have Will Anderson and Daniil Hunter on the edge. They have Danico Autry. They added Foley Fatukasi, who I know didn't work out here, but when healthy, I think playing next to those guys, he's going to be looking pretty damn good if he's able to stay healthy. And they have depth across the interior of that defensive line. This is a tough position for the Jaguars to be in, but I think if you're able to land a Brandon Ayuk or, I mean, it doesn't seem like T. Higgins is going to be traded because the, the, the Bengals, I think, want to go all in on this year as well. But if you can land a true number one receiver, and I think Brandon Ayuk absolutely is that, and he's the perfect fit, right? Um, he's he, he can be a Z for you. You know, Gabe Davis playing the big X role, uh, Christian Kirk in the slot, Evan Ingram, the move tight end, Brandon Ayuk, one of the best route runners in the game right now. He's, he's a fantastic football player. And he's got length. He's got explosiveness. He's so tough to cover. Can run a wide variety of routes at an extremely high level. I think he'd be perfect for the Jaguars. I really do. Can you go get the job done? Can you get it done if you're Trent Baalke and Ethan Waugh in this front office? You obviously have connections to San Francisco. Can you get that Can you get that thing done? That would be awesome. And then if you can get that done, go get Brandon Ayuk. I say in the first three picks of the draft, you're looking at defense, defense, and more defense. Now, obviously, you can't be that rigid and how you approach the draft. If there's better value at certain spots, you've got to take the value. But I think that there is going to be good value on the defensive side of the ball throughout the first three rounds. I think where the Jaguars are going to be drafting in the first round, there's going to be very good defensive value because maybe the first 10 picks are offensive players, right? And then so that pushes defensive guys down the board. And uh, I just think, you know, looking at stacks that they could potentially have, if you talk about going and getting Brandon Ayuk, now you have your complete picture at receiver you're good to go you don't have to worry about receiver for a long time um do you want to be paying all those guys it's not the most ideal situation because you are paying all of your receivers but uh i think that when you look at how this can shake out for the jaguars i think landing iu is the best possible option and then looking at some of these stacks you could have on defense if you did go defense the first three rounds and were able to keep all those picks Kool-Aid McKinstry at 17, I love that. Pairing him with Ronald Darby, with Tyson Campbell, with uh, the safeties you have, and then going like a Marshawn Neeland in round two. That's a guy who we've talked about here on the channel. I think that he would be a fantastic fit for the Jaguars as a third edge rusher. Powerful, explosive, very quick, uh, very agile, got great length. I would love that. And then maybe like a Mason Smith, who's somebody that they're, they're probably going to be interested in here. Um, out of LSU, a guy who has all the talent in the world, was coming off injury in 2023, didn't quite look himself, but tested incredibly well out of LSU, a former five-star big-time recruit. Uh, you could also go, uh, like, I don't think you have to go corner first round necessarily because I do think there's good depth at the cornerback position in this class. And I don't think the cornerback you're drafting in round one, you're saying, oh, that guy can lock down Stephon Diggs in year one like that's that's not the way this is going to work again i think just as important as that cornerback position is being able to dominate the trenches up front if you can create and you already have a good foundation with josh allen with trayvon walker with eric armstead with the rest of the guys you have up front if you can really create a dominant defensive front i would love that jared verse talked with hacker about that the other day on 1010 xl uh, if you were able to get jared verse at 17 and then go get like a Chris Jenkins in the second round. Interior defensive lineman who is awesome. Super powerful, twitched up, athletic guy. Uh, great length. I think that the when, when he was allowed to get into the, the pass rush mode at, at Michigan, he was able to really get after it. And then like a Renardo Green or an Andrew Phillips or someone of that ilk. In the third round, obviously I'd have Renardo Green ahead, but a Renardo Green might not make it to your third round pick. Who knows? But if you're able to stack something like that, I would love that. Or then you could even go into your defensive line in round one. What if Johnny Newton or Byron Murphy sitting there at 17? I know they're not bulky type picks, 
But those dudes are ballers, and those guys are going to make an impact in the backfield at the next level for a very long time. Go get Johnny Newton. Maybe you're able to land Ennis Drakestraw or Bernardo Green in the second round, an Adisa Isaac, someone like that in the third round. I think you've got a lot of good options here. But look, the Texans, they already took this division by storm in 2023. Instead of sitting on their hands this offseason like the Jaguars did last offseason, you know, when they were kind of the hot upstart team in the AFC South, the Texans have been pushing their chips in. They had more cap space to do it, obviously, than the Jaguars did, but that doesn't change things. That doesn't change the positions that these teams are in right now. You have got to keep up in this division. Brandon Ayuk and then defense, defense, defense makes a ton of sense to me. If you're able to do that, I do think that you're putting yourself in a position to compete with this Houston Texans team. And I still think, you know, with what, with the roster the Jaguars have, they're going to be able to compete. Will they be able to be better than the Houston Texans, who, again, insanely well coached on both sides of the ball. C.J. Stroud is awesome. The talent is awesome around him. I think it's going to be tough unless you really put your chips in, push your chips in the way they are pushing their chips in as well. Uh, and so I think you got to do that. Brandon Ayuk and defense, defense, defense. You already know Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker can give the Texans uh, all they can handle. Uh, Eric Armstead, same way. Go get more ballers up front. Go get another big-time cornerback. And I think that you can have a chance to win this division and compete for a very long time in the AFC South. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content here, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Again, if you want to support the channel further, check out ginjag.com slash shop. Pick up some new Duval gear like the hat I'm wearing right now. Y'all try to have a good one out there, all right?